Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke has retired. The story we are about to bring you is one of the most unusual in the history of our Navy. A Christmas Day celebration aboard a submarine in wartime. The ship was a USS Triton, and the story is unusual not only because of its Christmas aspects, but because Triton took part in the first land-based bomber attack against Japanese-held territory in World War II. Let's go aboard. Payday, December 1942. After four successful patrols, the USS Triton had been ordered to Pearl Harbor for alterations and overhaul. With the work finished and holiday spirit in the air, all hands hoped for a merry land-based Christmas. Lieutenant Commander C.C. Kirkpatrick of San Angelo, Texas, was skipper of the Triton. The chief of the boat was Chief Quartermaster Marsh Jones of New London, Connecticut. Lieutenant John H. Eichmann was executive officer. His accurate navigation had already taken Triton from the Aleutians to the equator. Lieutenant J.G. H.C. Van Rosen was diving officer. Hi, Captain. Find out how we stand? I bet John five bucks we don't leave till the first of the year. You lose, Van. What? We have our orders. Leave the 16th. Hi, Mike. You got the $5, will you? Oh, thanks, Lloyd. Here you are. What do I owe you, seven? Ten. You hit me for three last Sunday. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Look, Mike, being it's Christmas and all, how about let me give you a five now, five later? Christmas ain't got nothing to do with it, Roy. Make sure it gets in the bank with the rest of your loot. What are you giving your family for Christmas, Mike? I don't give nothing. I don't look for anybody to give me nothing, either. What'd you say that to him for? You know he's got no family. Well, it could be he's got some relatives, just because he doesn't talk about them. Well, he never gets any mail from them, so why should he send them anything? Well, that ain't the point. The guy's tight. In five more years, and he'll be a miser. Ah, oh, you're nuts. He's a good kid. Now, stop needling him. And so we figured, with your approval, of course, sir, that... Well, it'd kind of be nice to have something to celebrate with. Maybe eggnog. The crew's gonna need some morale boosting about that time, sir. Approval granted, provided the officers pay for the eggnog. I'll see to it, sir, and uh, I figured on a small tree and some decorations. We've got quite a few young fellows in the crew, sir. Probably the first Christmas away from home for some of them. Is it your first Christmas at sea, Van? Uh, yes, sir. Get the tree. Thank you, sir. Can you remember when you were that young? If I try hard. How about our assignment, Captain? Did we get a hot area? First job calls for aiding an air attack on Wake Island. An air attack? How do we do that? React as radio beacon. The bombers home in on our signal. How close to Wake do we go? The Japanese have an awful lot of planes based on that island. Close as we can get. But we'll be okay. It's coming off at night, the night of the 23rd. First land-based bombing of Japanese-held territory. Sort of a Christmas present for the folks back home, huh? I think the crew will be glad to be in on it. Make up a little for missing the fun here at Pearl. You know, Captain, if the mail gets in from the States early enough, we might have some presents to put under that Christmas tree. Yeah. Yeah, we might at that. No more room over there. What have we got left? It's the last one, Marsh. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's put these four under there. Pack them in tight and secure them with a line for sea. They're pretty light for emergency rations, aren't they, Chief? So we eat light food for a change. Remember what I said about opening them now. Christmas presents. Christmas? From the gray ladies of Honolulu. <laughs> what are you snorting about? You ought to be thankful you're getting something for nothing. Nuts.
Weren't you men told not to open those boxes? Yes, sir. Well, let's keep it quiet. Anybody else on this boat knows that's in there. I'll know who told them. We won't mention it to a soul, Captain. The night before the Triton was to sail, Chief Jones asked the captain to come topside. Captain? Compliments of the Postal Service. Is all that for us? Five bags full. This is the first class mail. I'm 10 days early, sir, but Merry Christmas. Same to you. Thanks. On December 16, 1942, the Triton left Pearl Harbor for a fifth war patrol. Diving exercises and gun drills were held as she proceeded towards her destination. December 23rd, Triton approached Wake Island submerged to avoid detection by enemy planes based there. The crew had been informed of the nature of the raid and excitement ran high. The electronic equipment was ready. If weather prevented visual sighting of Wake, the planes would have passed over at 8,000 feet, homing in on the Triton's beam glide to 4,000 and release their bombs according to specified time. But accurate navigation by the submarine was mandatory. If the Triton sent a signal from an inaccurate position, the bomb loads would fall harmlessly into the sea. It'll be dark enough to surface in a few minutes. We're 25 miles due east of Wake right now. Heavy cloud formations will be cutting visibility. Oh, plenty of time for it to clear up. I sure hope it does. I'd like to see that show. Up scope. She's read that letter. I don't get it. Well, as many letters as he gets, he's got a right to read it a hundred times. It's from his sister. He tell you that? No, not exactly. I was sitting next to him reading my mail, and all of a sudden he comes out with, Hey, what do you know? The old man showed up. His old man? Yeah, and then he mentioned his sister, and then he clammed up. I figured he had relatives. Such a hardhead, they probably don't get along. What do you got against him, anyhow? Just the way he acts. He's been on this boat four months now, right? Ever hear him say anything friendly? Ever go out with the guys and got a beer? Who does he think he is anyway? Big man, he saves his money. You know, Roy, there's an old saying, and it goes like this. You lend a man money and you lose a friend. What time are those bombers due, Captain? 2300. Exactly three hours. Enough moon up there to give the bombardier some help. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain, with your permission, I'd, I'd like to dress up as Santa Claus and give out presents at Christmas time. Where would you get the clothes? I bought a costume in Pearl before we left. <laughs> are you serious? Yes, sir. You get a beard, too? Uh, no, I couldn't find one, but uh, I figured I could use some hemp. Rope? Well, I could manage it, sir. You see, I know how to use crepe hair. When I was in school... Lights, dead ahead. <laughs> Moving lights off the starboard bow. Airplane lights. You figure they picked us up on their radar, Captain? We're pretty far offshore. It isn't likely. Captain, look. More planes taking off. A lot of them. Clear the bridge. It doesn't make sense, unless they've been warned about the attack in some way. Could be. But why send so many planes up now? Look like a general alert. Up, scope.
sure hate to see this plan fall apart. You think we ought to break silence and advise headquarters? Putting on quite a show. Wait a minute. There's one plane all lit up. It's a target plane. John, I think they're having an air raid drill. Take a look. If I'm right, we're in luck. All those planes will be out of gas by the time ours come over. It's hard to be sure, but if it is a drill, they certainly don't know anything about the raid. Two hours later, the Triton surfaced and watched the enemy planes return to wake. The searchlights went out and the island resumed its dark and silent appearance. The electronic equipment was set up and tested. And at 21.30, radar picked up the approaching bombers. The first wave was unopposed. The succeeding waves of bombers were met by searchlights and anti-aircraft fire. The Trident patrolled slowly across her assigned station, presenting maximum signal and alert for any plane in trouble that might be forced to ditch. Bridge, aircraft bearing 010. Be a nice hunting you do if it's not one of ours. Clear the bridge! Could be one in trouble. There it is, Captain. It's ours. Left full rudder, all head flank. Looks like he's gonna ditch. He's leveling off. Looks like he's okay, Captain. He probably just wanted to wish us a Merry Christmas. <laughs> On December 24th, the Triton made a submerged reconnaissance of Wake Island to gain information and to report on the damage done by the bombers. At the moment, however, this was less important to the crew than their preparations for Christmas. Harmon, control room. Harmon, control room, right. Ward. Ward, uh, engine room. McKenzie? Kenzie, uh... Hey, that's me! Those are the cookies from your mother. Well, cut out, you'll break them. Well, they're nothing but crumbs now. Get out! Over on the last side. Kalaski. Hey, here's one for Mike. For Mike? Hey, I was worried he wasn't getting one. There ain't cookies. Hey, let's hide it and make it sweat it out, huh? Go on. Hi, Mike. Jones? Jones, uh, he's engine. Battle stations, torpedo. Battle stations, torpedo. Cow, we got a target. <laughs> She's heading for the anchorage. Come left at 285. Aye, aye, sir. She's anchored all right. We'll fire two torpedoes. Set depth at six feet. Set torpedo depth at six feet. Angle on the bow, 90 port. This is a shooting observation. Bearing mark. Zero, four, zero. Range, mark, one, three, double O. Set, go. Fire one. Fire two. They're running hot, straight, and normal. There's one thing I don't like about this job. You can't see what you're shooting at. Another one. Fire three. That does it. She's going down. High speed propellers bearing 315. Closing fast. Take her to 140 feet. Aye, aye, sir. Dotson. Her engine room. Erskine. Hey, that's the third one for him. <laughs> Lover boy. You must have been telling the truth about those girls, huh? 
Duncan, radio. Yeah, I'll put him in with the control room. Triton remained under attack for two hours, but the enemy never came close. At midday, Captain Kirkpatrick altered course to the southwest. At 2100 on Christmas Eve, Triton surfaced. Hey, how are you gonna glue that rope on your face? Spirit gum, I got a bottle from the Red Cross. <laughs> sure looks like the real thing. Yeah, wait till you see the suit. <laughs> you got Mackenzie and his boys decorating the forward torpedo room? Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, most of the crew don't even know it's coming off. Well, let's try it. Yeah, let's see. Not bad. What do you think? You haven't got any nutmeg or cinnamon. Well, you can't have everything, you know. Oh, the heck you can't. Look, I'll be back in a second. Well, everything okay, Jones? That everything you brought aboard, Mr. Van Roosen. God. Have it finished real soon. Where's the mistletoe, Mr. Van Roosen? You get the girls, I'll get the missile. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Mayhew. Yeah? Yes, sir. Have we got any nutmeg on board? Nutmeg? Cinnamon will do. I got nutmeg. There's your nutmeg. Oh. Say, those turkeys look great. Yeah, just like home. All we need now is a little eggnog and some... Mr. Van Roosen, you wouldn't be wanting that for... Uh... Uh, you got any better use for it? I'd never miss it, sir. Thanks a lot. as you are. How about helping me finish this off? Here. Spread that out. Okay. Mike, can I give you a tip? Why don't you open up a little bit? I noticed you when we were all sitting around shooting the bull. You never say anything. Got nothing to say. The other day you mentioned your dad for the first time. Up until then, we, we figured you were an orphan. What'd your dad do? He was a coal miner. Oh, yeah? Well, what's so funny about that? My dad used to shovel coal. He's a fireman on a railroad. Mom's still alive? No. no. She died when I was 10. I heard you talking about your sister the other day. Anyone else in the family? Got a kid brother. You live with your sister? Hey, he used to, but the old man's got him now. Yeah, and you were glad to hear that. It's about time he did something for one of us. We ain't seen him in five years. Oh, I must have been tough getting along. Yeah, it was better while he was gone. My aunt took care of us. Uh, when he was around, he was always drinking, arguing with my sister. Yeah, I know how that is. My dad used to do that once in a while. You get laid off work. No, no. My old man used to do it all the time. He never let us have any fun. Even when the charity ladies would uh, bring us Christmas presents, my old man, he'd bust them up. He'd tell them he wouldn't take charity and, and Christmas was for babies and that kind of stuff. He'd go off drunk two weeks and come back on his knees. In the meantime, we was living on charity. Well, guy doesn't like telling things like that. So I just keep quiet. What's so terrible about that? 
You're gonna hold it against him for the rest of his life? A guy can change, you know. That's what my sister says. Did you read my letter? Oh, Mike, I wouldn't do anything like that. I just said the same thing because that's the right thing. I don't know. My sister said he asked about me. He wants to make it up to me. Sure he does. Give him a break. <laughs> you know, Mike, it's kind of funny. Here. A war is breaking up families all over the world. It's bringing you back together. Yeah. December 25th, 1942. The Triton's log reads, 0900, dived to 200 feet and held appropriate Christmas ceremonies. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. La 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 la. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Sonnenberg. Real good. Merry Christmas, boy. Merry Wilson. Christmas. Wilson. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Wilson. Smith! Oh, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to you. One third of the crew at a time came forward. It was a moment of peace, a quiet silence in the thunder of war. The sounds they made were of joy and gladness. Kaluski! There you go, boy. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas, Chief Jones. Thank you, Lord. Merry Christmas, Jones. Thank you. Otterson! Merry Christmas, Lord. Mike? package for you. I saved it as kind of a surprise. Mackenzie, thank you for your help. You get a great big well done from Santa Claus. You too, Kaleski. Uh, by the way, when Santa's little helpers clean up around here, be sure and save this stuff, huh? We'll stow it away and use it again next year. Thanks, Mr. Van Rusen. And Mike, get your mess gear and let's chow down. Hey, Kaluski. Sign this. Hmm? Oh. Got any complaints? <laughs> nah, not a one. Yes, Chief. Message, Captain. From all members of the crew to the commanding officer, subject Christmas Day, thanks for. We, the crew of the USS Triton, wish to thank the commanding officer and officers one of the finest Christmas days we have ever spent. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. Rear Admiral C.C. Kirkpatrick, United States Navy, who is the captain of the USS Triton, is with us. And it's with a great deal of pleasure that I introduce him to you. That Christmas day must be a wonderful memory for you, Kirk. It certainly is, Tommy. Every Christmas when I'm at home with my family, I can't help but think of our efforts to celebrate the day under those trying conditions. I'll bet every man who was there will always remember it. I hope so, so they were some of the finest men I ever knew on that patrol. Practically everyone who has been through trying conditions in a submarine feels that way about his shipmates. Well, that's not hard to understand, Tommy. In a submarine, everyone is dependent upon everyone else. When the ship is handled successfully, it makes for a feeling of mutual pride and respect. Yes, if an outsider tries to whip one, he's liable to find himself having to whip all of them. Was the fifth patrol as successful as you would have hoped it to be? Well, now, Tommy, you know no patrol is as successful as you'd want it to be, but this was a good one. We not only guided our bombers to Wake Island, but we had the pleasure of sinking one of their tankers. That was the nicest Christmas present of all. I'm sure it was. Thank you, Kirk, for being with us. I've enjoyed it, Tommy. Please be with us again when the silent service brings you another exciting and unusual submarine story. Yeah. 